This is what narcissists do when they can no longer control you. Hello everyone, we're delighted to have you back on our channel. Today, we're diving into a topic that has emerged from a wide array of inquiries, all converging around a similar theme. The question we're exploring is, what are the standard reactions or behaviors of a narcissistic person when they realize that their usual manipulative tactics are no longer effective? What occurs when you've seen through their facade, or when they've been unmasked in some way? In essence, what transpires when a narcissist feels they've lost the control they once wielded over someone? Before we proceed, if you find this video insightful or beneficial in any way, we kindly request you to consider subscribing to our channel. However, it's crucial to remember that this video is not designed to replace professional mental health support, nor should it be utilized to diagnose someone. This is simply a platform for discussion and understanding. To begin with, let's define narcissism. It is typically characterized by an inflated sense of entitlement, an intense focus on oneself, a tendency to be disagreeable, and a heightened sensitivity or resistance to criticism. Narcissists can also be exploitative, manipulative, and exhibit a conspicuous lack of empathy. Now, it's important to note that we all may exhibit these traits to a lesser degree on occasion. However, in the case of narcissism, particularly pathological narcissism, these behaviors are not sporadic or fleeting. Rather, they are consistent, persistent, all-encompassing, and constant. This brings us to a pertinent question. What happens when someone starts to see through a narcissist's disguise? Given that narcissists can be incredibly vindictive, it's a reasonable speculation to ponder how they might react. At times, their reactions may be completely unpredictable. However, if you've been in a relationship with a narcissist, be it a romantic partnership, a friendship, or even growing up in a family with narcissistic dynamics, you likely have a sense of what's coming. You know all too well that a narcissist is not likely to react well once they've lost the ability to control you. To fully comprehend this, it's essential to recall that narcissistic individuals often base their self-worth on the admiration and deference they receive from others. They exhibit a significantly weak sense of self and a glaring lack of insight into their own behaviors. They crave attention and validation, and if these are not given to them voluntarily, or as per their often unreasonable demands, they resort to manipulation, coercion, bullying, guilt-tripping, and shaming to obtain it. They inhabit an internal world dominated by envy and shame, and paradoxically, they often engage in shameful actions in an attempt to evade these feelings of shame. These actions, such as devaluing, rejecting, punishing, cheating, and scorning others, are frequently the very behaviors that push people away. So, let's delve into some of the typical ways a narcissist behaves when they lose control over someone. Surprisingly, one of the first responses may be an apology. Yes, you heard it right, they might actually express remorse. They might genuinely be sorry, but not necessarily for their actions or the pain they've inflicted. More often than not, their sorrow is tied to the consequences they now have to face. They may be regretful that they are being deserted or that others can now see them for who they truly are. Alternatively, their apology may come with an excuse, such as blaming their anxiety, illness, or addiction for their behavior. They might say things like, it's not me, it's my anxiety, I can't help it, it's my illness, it's not my fault, or it's my addiction. This is their way of dodging responsibility for their actions. Furthermore, the apology may be accompanied by some form of caveat, often designed to shift some of the blame onto you. They might say something along the lines of, I am sorry, but after all, you did say something 10 years ago that I found quite offensive. This is another manipulative tactic they employ to retain some semblance of control, even as they lose it. Even in situations where you might receive an apology, and even if it seems genuinely heartfelt, it's important to note that these apologies tend to be fleeting. They might last a moment, a minute, a day, or perhaps even a week. However, narcissists generally revert to their previous behaviors after a short while. The more adept ones might simply devise a different method to carry out the same manipulative tactics. Moreover, their response might not necessarily take the form of an apology. Instead, it might seem as though they're attempting to reason with you. Picture a scenario where someone has adopted the gray rock method, responding with just one-word answers, 
or has decided to go no contact and is not responding at all. In such cases, you might receive a text or an email that generally reads something along the lines of, I have no idea what I've done to upset you, but I'll always love you. This message is typically followed by a word salad, a confusing jumble of words and phrases. Hidden within this word salad, you will often find a veiled threat, which essentially translates to, and I'm going to let other people know what you're like. By the way, I'll always love you. However, if you do receive a message of this sort, or perhaps an apology accompanied by pleading tears, you might find yourself contemplating whether to give them another chance. While it's not my place to dissuade you, I would urge you to reflect on your past experiences. Consider how many apologies you've received in the past. The number might not be high, but regardless, try to recall how many there were. More importantly, did their behavior improve following their apology? If there was no change in their actions, why would you expect a different outcome this time around? The second prevalent behavior you may observe is that when a narcissist is exposed or caught in their manipulative tactics, they are rarely, if ever, willing to acknowledge the truth. Consider this, if they are incapable of admitting their own errors, misjudgments, or limitations, even to themselves, they are certainly not going to confess their toxic behavior to you or anyone else. Instead, they typically resort to a barrage of false accusations, twisting your words or actions, alleging that you said or did things you never actually did or said, and the pivotal element here is the deliberate misinterpretation of you and your intentions. Some narcissists are incredibly skilled at this, and if you've been in a long-term relationship with such an individual, they've had ample time to refine their manipulative and gaslighting tactics. You might even find yourself questioning your own memories or judgment, particularly if it appears that others are falling for the narcissist's lies. Covert narcissists, who are often skilled at maintaining a facade of humility and contrition while simultaneously engaging in passive-aggressive behavior, are particularly adept at this. They project an image of innocence while subtly undermining and manipulating those around them. The key is to trust your own experiences and perceptions. It can be disorienting and draining to find oneself constantly on the defensive. However, remember that the narcissist's objective is to maintain control and avoid accountability. Their tactics are about retaining their power, not about your actions or character. The third common behavior exhibited by a narcissist, especially following a breakup, pertains to their interaction with your social circle. If they haven't already managed to isolate you from your friends, family, or colleagues, they may initiate contact with them. This is typically couched in expressions of concern, with statements like I'm really worried about them, I haven't heard from them in a long time. Alternatively, if you were part of a club or group, they may suddenly develop an interest in it. They begin to show up at events or meetings, participate in the group's activities or sports, and start mingling with your friends. They might even reach out to your friends and family, inviting them over or visiting them, all in an attempt to portray themselves as decent and caring individuals. They strive to contradict any negative image of them you might have conveyed. This behavior serves several purposes. Primarily, it's an attempt to convert the victim's social circle into their allies, or flying monkeys, who unwittingly snoop, stalk, and feed them information. It's also a form of intimidation, a reminder to the victim that they are not entirely safe, that the narcissist is still present in their life. Moreover, it's a strategy to control the narrative, influencing how others perceive both them and the victim. Narcissism, by its very nature, is highly destructive. It tends to erode relationships and trust from the inside. When a narcissist loses their ability to exert this internal control, they often resort to external means of destruction. They attempt to disrupt the victim's life and relationships from the outside, further illustrating their desperate need for control and their refusal to accept loss. The fourth common behavior exhibited by a narcissist involves projection onto their victim. They frequently attempt to emotionally manipulate their victims into shouldering the blame for the narcissist's actions and poor behavior. Following a separation of any sort, be it a friendship or a romantic relationship, the narcissist typically offloads all their pain, guilt, and shame onto the victim. They employ any means necessary to manipulate the victim's emotions, aiming to elicit pity and sympathy. Their persistence in this endeavor can be staggering. 
They might resort to incessant pleading, crying, feigning illness, or expressing anger until the victim apologizes for their feelings, for the way they were treated, and even for their inability to tolerate the toxic behavior they were subjected to. As I often say, it's like they wet the bed and then blame the blanket. The fifth common behavior of a narcissist is their propensity for vindictiveness. They react with hostility to the audacity of someone seeing through their facade or refusing to tolerate their antics any longer. It's crucial to remember that narcissists have a strong sense of entitlement, which often translates into a belief that their victim deserves their spiteful actions. They can become obsessively vindictive, some may resort to physical violence, damaging property, spreading malicious rumors, or deliberately withholding support, resources, or information. Essentially, they will do anything they believe will help them regain some semblance of power and control over their victim. It's as though they feel compelled to teach their victims a lesson for daring to challenge their authority. The sixth common behavior of narcissistic individuals manifests as a manipulation tactic, which may be contingent on the specific situation they find themselves in. This manipulation can surface when you, as the victim, express any discomfort or critique towards their actions. In defense, they might assert statements such as, I love you, and I behave this way for your sake. The main goal of this behavior is to justify their actions, making it appear as if their conduct, no matter how harmful, is rooted in their concern and affection for you. This justification is not just a mere explanation for their behavior, but it serves as an insidious tool to persuade you into understanding and forgiving their actions. It's a psychological maneuver designed to manipulate you into overlooking their behavior, effectively condoning their actions. This form of manipulation often leads to confusion for the victims, causing them to dismiss, deny, or downplay their feelings and concerns. This can lead to a cycle of abuse, where the victim constantly finds themselves justifying the narcissist's harmful actions, trapping them in an unhealthy relationship dynamic. Lastly, we arrive at behavior number seven, if a narcissist realizes that they can no longer deceive, manipulate, or intimidate, they might attempt to establish a trauma bond. This can manifest as a pattern of toxic behavior that, while normal for the narcissist, becomes normalized for the victim. The victim may start to feel a sense of dependency on the narcissistic individual who is subjecting them to abuse. This dependency could be financial, or perhaps they share children and hence need to maintain contact. In some cases, the victim might feel unable to leave because the abuser is dependent on them due to an illness or physical condition. If there wasn't a trauma bond present before, the narcissist may attempt to create one. If such a bond was already in place, they might strive to reinforce it, using all means at their disposal to make it exceedingly difficult for the victim to assert their independence or leave. These are just a few of the common traits and behaviors exhibited by narcissistic individuals when they sense they are losing control over someone. Bear in mind that understanding these patterns is a crucial step in recognizing and dealing with a narcissist who feels they are losing control. Remember, their behaviors are not a reflection of your worth or character, but rather a manifestation of their own insecurities and desperate need for control. As always, there are many more aspects that I haven't covered here. If you wish to contribute additional insights, please feel free to use the comment section below. There are always fascinating discussions evolving around these videos. If you found this video interesting or helpful, please consider subscribing to my channel. Thank you for watching, and until next time, stay informed and vigilant.